I'll get straight to the point here. The back brakes on my Leon just now are sticking on one side. The caliper is seized up and when I use a handbrake or even just use a foot brake, the caliper is staying on. So it's causing damage then to the brake discs and pad. So I thought, well, I'm changing that caliper. I might as well change the caliper on the other side, do both brake discs and pads on the back and also change the backing plates as well if need done and just completely revamp the back of the brakes on the car. This video, what I'm gonna do is just basically show you the process, show you what I've bought, how I'm doing a few other bits extra on this as well to make it look a bit better. And you can just then copy the process yourself if you plan on doing this as well. Oh, but first, if you have been in the UK the past few days, there's been a lot of heavy snowfall. So I've got to clear a good bit of snow off the top of the Leon first before I get in the garage because I don't want it melting and causing puddles in here. Actually, to get it just in the garage door, so it just closes in front of the nose of the car and no more, I actually pushed it and it moved. So it's not sticking on just now, the caliper. Uh, once we start taking it apart, I'll start showing you the damage on the brake discs and stuff and what kind of things it's been doing. The first sign you obviously notice if you've got a brake, brake caliper sticking on, as you might notice the car, is just as you come up to a junction, it's slowing down a bit more itself as you can reach lower speeds. You'll probably smell it if the caliper is sticking on the wheel and done a long, like 10, 15 minute journey, you'll probably smell the heat off that wheel. Winter time as well, when it's like salt on the roads, you'll see that it instantly dries the salt on the alloy wheel because it just irradiates the heat onto the alloy. So the alloy's warm, the brakes are obviously roasting hot, and sometimes, like I said, you can smell it. So seeing as the car is now into the night, it's not moving at all when I start taking these wheels off, eh, uh, might as well have one of these. That's the actual perks of cold weather outside and the cold garage, is that these are probably colder than they would be if they were in the fridge. So yeah, nice way to enjoy it. Anyway, let's get started. First of all, with the wheel out the way, I started off with the 13 mil bolts on the back of the brake caliper. Now these are a bit tricky to get off, so even with vice grips, I couldn't shift them at all. So I left them for just now and started off the two bolts at the back of the brake caliper carrier instead. Now these were still tricky as well, even though I had them off recently for the wheel bearing, but I did finally manage to get them loosened and then went to remove the retaining screw from the front of the brake disc. Once this was out of the way, I then tried to lever off the brake caliper away from the brake disc. Again, this was really tricky. For some reason it was well stuck onto the brake disc for maybe sitting for a couple of days, but I did finally get it off. So that shouldn't have been as hard as that because I've had this subpart not long ago for uh, doing the wheel bearing on this side, which I'll leave a link down to that video if you want to see that. Yeah, it's come apart finally. Uh, you can see the state of the brake disc. It is pretty well worn. A lot of corrosion. It's actually not got a lip on it, it's, it's in really good neck that way, but there's a groove rubbing all the way into it. And here, I wasn't going to replace these because these are actually still solid and not that badly corroded, but you can see that there's a hole there. It's rusted through a hole. Other two bolts will happen, that'll happen to them as well. And then once that falls off, it sits against your brake disc. And I'm sure everyone at some point's had that horrible noise where the backing plate is just rubbing against your brake disc as you're driving around. And the first thing you want to do is get them off as soon as possible. Uh, I'll replace that backing plate, put three new bolts in, and then we need to get this caliper off the braking system, so off the handbrake and the brake pipes, and then separate the carrier because I need to spray the carrier to go along with my new calipers that I've sprayed as well. Now unknown to me, getting this pipe off is always a pain with these cars, it never seems to come off in one piece. I was going round and round with the nut here, and as you can see it's gradually turning the pipe as well, and at which point it actually snaps off altogether. I have got replacements on the way, so it's not an issue. Pull the brake flexi out of the retaining part on the brake caliper, and then take out the last of the two bolts from the back of the hub to release the carrier and the caliper itself. I then managed to get those 30mm bolts out of the back of the caliper and the quick inspection of the brake pads to see what like they were. And they weren't too bad actually, to be honest, but they are getting replaced. Now when trying to remove these screws for the backing plates, it's always a pain. They never seem to come out very well. They're always rusted and corroded. So it's just a matter of getting off as best you can. Now you're probably noticing as more and more parts come off the car that there's a lot of corrosion here. Now this just seems to be a kind of norm up here in the north of Scotland beside the sea. Even the trolleys in nearby supermarkets are really badly corroded even after them being galvanised. So sadly just what happens to cars and other metal parts up here in the north of Scotland. 
Now these screws on the backing plate were being a pain. So I just lost a rag in the end and basically ripped off the backing plate. They went back to the screws individually and used the best methods to try and get them off. As you can see, a mixture of vice grips, heat and a grinder as well, all helped to get them out. And before putting new screws back in, I just got a tap and die site and cleared out the threads of each of these three holes to make sure they were properly clear and they weren't going to cause any issues with the screws went back in. Then I'm taking the cap off that covers the bolt that holds the wheel bearing on. So pop the cap off and then you've got to put a bit of a struggle. If you haven't taken this bolt off before, there's thread lock holding it on. So it is quite tough to get this bolt undone. Once you've pulled the bearing out of the way, you now have full access to put a new splash guard on. And I made a silly mistake here that I actually had the wrong splash guard in my hand. It's hard to tell the difference actually, they look really similar. But you've got to make sure that both the holes behind the back of the caliper where it mounts onto the hub are clear of the splash guard. That's the easy way to see. Now the bolts I put back on here to replace the ones that came off in little bits were just these flange bolts I got from eBay. I'll leave a link down below in the description for them if you want to get some yourself. I just find them the best to remove later on because they've actually got a proper bolt head on them and not the wee Torx heads instead. Now I'm putting the same wheel bearing back on again because it is pretty much just three weeks old. I'm going to use the same bolt as well and add some thread lock to it and then spin it in as far as I can by hand and then torque it up to 180 Newton meters. Then pop the dust cap back over the bolt for the wheel bearing and time to add my brand new brake disc. Now this black painted part around it as well, I'll explain how I did that in a wee while. This is a side that's really bad. So as you can probably see the kind of shiny surface, it's not surface corrosion, it's actually the shiny surface is coming off. That's ridges the whole way across there. A wee bit of a lip on the edge. I'm looking down at those pads, a bit dark in there actually, but you can kind of see that they are really thin. So this one's been sticking on, the other side hasn't been. This one actually, I forgot to say that this one's not been painted. The other side was painted as standard when I got the replacement. I think the red one was replaced most recently. So this has been on the car for the longest, probably hence why it is seizing and sticking on first. So the second side being pretty much the same as the first side, the powered ratchet really being useful here to take off those 30 mil bolts, which did come out this time in place. Then trying to get this pipe off again, trying to see if I could save this one and not break it. But after seeing it spinning as well like the other side, I just thought the easiest way is just to cut it with a pair of pliers. Cutting it also means that it stops brake fluid running out of the end of the brake pipe when you pull up the flexi. Then once the caliper is pulled out of the way, I get to inspect the brake pads. On this side, they're really, really bad actually. Very, very thin compared to the other side. And now finally to move on to removing the bolts for the brake caliper carrier on the back. And this is where problems begin. What a mess. <laughs> Do you ever find that when you're doing this kind of stuff, you just have tools everywhere and you can't figure out, well, when you're doing two sides, you can't figure out if you've left it on the other side or if you've taken it with you and you can't find it. Anyway, camera had to go off there because my lights that light up the whole area died. This side has been, oh, this side has been an absolute pain. The two bolts, this is always the same with these brake caliper carriers. The two bolts that hold the carrier in place on the back, uh, that's what they're usually like. These are brand new ones and I bought brand new ones because I knew the ones that came off would be an absolute mess. The piece that goes in them, obviously if it's corroded, the bolts on the back are corroded, that just rounds off inside, which happened. And then I'll show you in a second the mess at the back of there, as well as the rust. And then I tried to heat up the bolt and the surrounding bit of metal, like the hub, to try and loosen it. That didn't work either. I think I actually melted the plastic around the back of the ABS sensor. So I'm going to find out once the car's back together with the ABS light now pings on because the ABS light, uh, because the ABS sensor is faulty now because I've burnt it. Yeah, I'll just show you what I've done now. Uh, first of all, I'll just show you these things. These things are a lifesaver. If you've watched the Ibiza project video, I had the brakes all redone around the whole of that car. And those things saved my life several times. So, so yeah, like I said, excuse the mess of the rust. It's just this. It's a 13 year old car and it's north of Scotland, so I'm afraid this is what happens to them. So you can see I've put one of the extractors on there. Can you see the one at the top? So that one's still to come out at the back there. But yeah, you can see this one here and the proximity to the ABS sensor there. So that's what I was kind of half melting, so I really hope that's not faulty now. Anyway, I've hammered this on. Then I've just taken it off with a large socket and you can see it is actually starting to come out there. So that'll come out and I'll probably do the same with the one up at the top up there. And to get proper access in it, I've taken the bolt at the bottom of the hub. So I could lower the suspension arm here, take the spring out and basically just give me access straight in onto here because otherwise you're kind of working up through the gap between this lower arm and the front arm and there's not much space to move a ratchet or even get any sort of grip on that. And at the top, it's the same as well. You're kind of poking it down through gaps so it's not working very well. 
So I just wanted to show you the issues there because I want to be honest that this is never straightforward. I think most of my videos I am pretty honest about issues I come across and the struggles I have and the way I try and fix it. I am glad I've got those bolts finally loosened and they will come out and then I'll just crack on and do that. Exactly the same as the other side. So I wanted to show you the process. I'll get to the same stage the other side is in. Then the carriers, I'll get them sanded down tomorrow and sprayed and that'll be a case of getting coat of lacquer on them and on the calipers as well. It is currently just gone half past 12 at night. I've only got halfway through my second bottle of beer because I've been too busy lying on the car, cursing and swearing, wrapping my knuckles on rusty suspension parts and trying to get bolts done. So I'll crack on like I said, I'm gonna go to bed, then I'm knackered and I will catch you in a few seconds tomorrow. So here's me walking through the snow to get to the garage. Here's me coming in the garage. Here's me putting a box down breaking through it to get the pipes out for going back on the calipers. And here's me talking to the camera, unaware that my microphone is not working at all. It hasn't recorded any of this next segment. So here I am to basically explain what's going on. So basically I'm super chuffed because my auto dock order has arrived. The brake pipes are in amongst it as well. And it means the job isn't gonna be halted for a few days waiting for that delivery to turn up. And now I'm explaining why I haven't fitted the second wheel bearing to the other side of the car. Now basically both my hubs on the back of the car are slightly different. The mounting shafts that the wheel bearing goes onto is 32 millimeters on one side and then 30 millimeters on the other side. Now I ordered two wheel bearings that mount on 32 millimeter shafts. So I am now short of the wheel bearing that actually mount on the other side of the car. Really strange scenario. I don't know if this normally happens on cars. I expect them both to be the same, but it means I've got to order a different wheel bearing now for this 30 millimeter shaft. Then I'm rambling some more rubbish here. I have not a clue what I'm seeing at all. And now I'm holding up the brake caliper carriers saying how disgusting they are and how I need to get these sanded down, ready to spray the same red. I'm gonna spray the rest of the calipers as well. Oh, and before I do anything, I'm explaining that I need to take the car back up the garage. So I'm just gonna pop the wheels back on quickly, not use the brakes obviously, just pop the car back onto drive and I've got the garage then to spray the calipers and the carriers. So with these brand new calipers, what I'm doing is going to mask off certain bits of it. So the bleed nipple, I'm going to mask that off along with the piston and the seal for the piston as well. And also the mounting area, I'm going to mask that off at the same time where the caliper mounts onto the bracket. Now we did put a poll up on my community tab on YouTube to see which was a better color to go for, metallic red or the standard red on these calipers. Now thanks to Superbike and Gary for their comments on the metallic red being the best option, which I totally agreed with as well. But once I sprayed it on the caliper, it just wasn't looking like I thought it would. So in the end, I'm afraid I had to go for the standard red color instead. Now, as you saw there, it's just a case of building up some layers of etch primer to get a base coat on. You might think it's worth masking off the handbrake mechanism on the back of the caliper, but this isn't the case. A bit of paint on this won't do it any harm at all. It won't stop it from moving. Actually, the paint might help protect it from corrosion in future. Then on with the red paint itself. And even though the finish is looking pretty rough here, it will get smoothed out in a wee while. If you are planning spraying new calipers yourself like this, it's up to yourself how you want to do it, whether you want to have them sitting down on a box like I've done here. But I also had them hanging up for a while on bungee cords off the rafters of my garage. But you have to be aware that a lot of overspray goes everywhere. No matter how careful you are, it tends to land on every flat surface in your garage working space. So just be aware of this because everything just now is covered with red dust in my garage. Now onto these manky carriers. So I use a combination of wire brushes, the sanding flappy disc things you can put on drills, and also a hammer to chip off some of the corrosion to get these back to bare metal or as close to bare metal as I could. Then the same as the calipers, so a few coats of etch primer and then a few coats of red paint as well. So now onto the new brake discs. So I want to make sure they look new for a lot longer by painting the bit that usually rusts on brake discs. Now after masking them off, I had to put them in the oven in the house to take the chill off them because they've been in the freezing cold garage and they were far too cold to paint. Thank you to Dusan, sorry if I pronounced your name wrong there, for thinking I was powder coating them. Along that lines, but not quite. Anyway, now they're back in the garage, I'm warm enough to paint, so I give them a few coats. Then remove the masking tape, and this is the final look. Next up was to return back to the calipers and the carriers, because the red paint was now dry, to apply some lacquer. I applied this two-part lacquer, which I'll explain more about in a second, but if you are using this stuff, just make sure you're wearing a proper respirator, because the fumes off it is really, really bad then left the parts to dry in the kitchen until the following morning. So yeah, how good do they look? They actually turned out half decent. The stuff I used was this stuff here. I've shown a few pictures of it there just a while ago. It's 2K two-part lacquer. 
and it's the gloss one, you get matte one and a matte version and a gloss version. But there's a lot of lacquers, I found this a few months ago when I did this kind of thing before, but there's a few lacquers that state 2K on the packet, but they're just standard lacquers. 2K is one that will have a reactor button on the bottom, so if you are looking for one yourself, they're really good, they're 10 times better than standard lacquer that you get in a can. They're going to be better resistant to chemicals and petrol and oil and stuff. They're also like a harder surface as well, so make sure you get one that's got the wee reactor button that you've got to take off the lid and put in the bottom, and this will definitely give you better spray, better quality lacquer, and last a lot longer as well. As for the hangers, they're fine. They're red. Because they're rough anyway, I had to just kind of take off the worst of the corrosion I could and then paint them. You're obviously seeing the roughness to certain parts of them, but the main part that you're going to be looking at when it's hanging on the car is this bit here and part of the sides and the top, how much side it goes on, and the top of one of these parts here as well. It doesn't really matter too much about the rest of the bracket because you'll never see that anyway on the car. Oh, and as you saw as well, make sure you wear a mask when using the 2K lacquer because it is really harmful. Not just the standard mask you sometimes get for sanding and stuff, but one of these proper coverage filtered masks that will actually stop anything getting into your, your system. So if I want any sort of incentive today to make sure I get this car back on the road, it's what, 10 to 2 just now. I start working about half 5 for night shift tonight. I'll admit, last night I was on night shift. I didn't get a chance to do the car at all yesterday, so I'd take the wife's car to work. As much as I enjoy driving at Renault Kajar, it's not actually a bad family car. I really want to get my car back on the road and working again. So let's see if I can get this done in the next two and a half hours, put back together, or else I'm jumping back in that rental tonight and going to work. Now, if you're subscribed to the monthly newsletter that I send out each month that's filled with car content, you'll have access also to these free job cards that I'm now making for each video. So every video will be detailed down on these job cards regarding the tools you require, the step-by-step -step process to go through, and also the torque values you require for any bolts or nuts. These job cards will be available for all upcoming videos, and I'm also planning on backdating all the previous videos on the channel as well. So if that might be of use to you, then just click the link down below in the description or the pinned comment in the comment section, and that will take you to a link to sign up to the newsletter and get access to these job cards. Oh, and just one last thing as well. I've actually got two pairs now of brake pipes to go on the back for the caliper meets the brake flexi, just these wee short pipes. Because Amazon actually, the ones I got from Amazon, I think they came within two days, even though it says about like five days delivery. But one tip I'd just say is if you are planning to change your calipers or taking them off at any point to change over certain bits and pieces, if you're planning on moving that pipe, it doesn't tend to come off very easily. It seems to always break or twist the pipe as you're taking the nut off. I would always just buy a pair as a backup to have on hand just in case that does happen. It's funny because when I'm doing my brakes just now on a Facebook group that I follow, Mark 2 Leon owner's face group page, they have had a couple of conversations recently about brake seizing. It seems to be the winter time is bringing out everyone's brakes or sticking on their cars now. A lot of questions about it and also just comments about certain things that you definitely need to replace and these were one of them. These pipes seem to be a continual pain. For about, I think, 15 to 20 quid, I would definitely just have these on standby whenever you're doing the rear calipers on your car. So with my fresh new carriers, it's just time to start cleaning up the mounting bits where the slide pins and the rubber boots go. Use whatever methods you can to make sure these are clean as possible so that the pins don't get caught inside. I then fitted the rubber boots and then popped in some of the silicone grease and then slid the sliding pins down inside. Just be aware that you're finding the pins are really springy, they're pushing back out too much. It could be there's air stuck in the system, so just let a bit of air out the side of the rubber boots. And then finally using tap and die set again to clean up the threads on the carriers to make sure the new bolts go in nice and easily. And you can see how much stuff comes out of these threads. A lot of corrosion gets built up over the years, so it's best to remove this. Now onto reassembly, so I'm just fitting the carriers back onto the hub, along with the new brake discs. Here's a lovely fuzzy shot of my elbow. And once you've tightened up the two bolts in the back of the carrier to the following torque specs, just have a quick check to make sure that the disc isn't interfering with the carrier in any way. And also the new spring clips that you get with your brake pads are fitted correctly and not catching on the brake disc. Then I apply a wee bit of copper grease on the lugs of the brake pads that sit inside the metal sliding retainers. So with the new caliper now, it's time to thread the handbrake cable through the bracket and then clip it around the back of the handbrake mechanism. Now here's where I had a bit of trouble. The, basically the wee brake pipe that you fit to the caliper that then connects into the flexi didn't properly line up with the bracket that the flexi is going to come through. So it's probably best to do this before you put the caliper on the car. Basically what I did was with the brake caliper off the car, I fitted the brake pipe into the caliper and then bent it really, really carefully so that the brake pipe basically lined up square to the bracket where the brake flexi would pass through and also it sits in the centre as well. This just means once it's fitted to the car it's way easier to get the brake flexi through the bracket and tied up to this brake pipe. You might need to use a caliper wind back kit to push the piston back in if you have started to pull on the handbrake mechanism at all and it's started to wind the piston out. 
and just to hopefully stop any squeaking on the brakes, I just applied some copper grease to the brake pads and on the piston. Then it was time to tighten up the new 30mm bolts that go in the back of the brake caliper using a spanner to stop the whole thing from moving and then just very carefully nip up the brake pipes so they're nice and tight. Now the next step is totally up to you but I just had some ceramic that I'd never used before. It was some cheap stuff in the back of the cupboard. I opened it up and applied it to the caliper and onto the bracket as well. Anything that was painted red basically. This was just in the hope that it might make it easier to keep the brakes nice and clean. Now I'd obviously done exactly the same to the other side of the car so it was now ready to start bleeding these brakes. Now I'm using this pressurised kit here that's a Sealy brake bleeding kit and I'm just filling it up with some of this DOT4 brake fluid. Then I'm going down to the front of the car to the brake reservoir and once I remove the cap and the wee plunger I'm going to take out as much brake fluid, old brake fluid, as I can using a syringe. So what I did next was kind of backwards. I did fill up with brand new brake fluid, which is fine. But what you can do, rather than bleeding the brake kit to get all the pipe full of brake fluid before connecting it, you can just do that over your brake reservoir instead and fill it up gradually through the pipe of the Sealy kit into the brake reservoir. It's a lot easier and a lot less mess on your garage floor. So I quickly removed the cap off the brake bleeding kit and screw it onto the top of the reservoir and then attach the hose to the rest of it. And after a lot of battling and a lot of pumping, I finally got it up to 10 PSI or around that area. I don't know if something's missing off my Sealy kit. I've never used it before, it's about a year old. Opened it up and I think there's something missing off this top valve bit of the kit and that's why the air is coming back out so much. But finally I got it sorted and fixed with a wee bodge and it was holding the pressure. So now that the brake system is under pressure, it's basically wanting to push out fluid wherever it can. So I open up the bleed nipple on one of the back brake calipers and then I attach a brake bleeding bottle to it and take out as much of the fluid along with the bubbles as possible. You want to make sure that you're taking out every single bubble, so keep an eye on this pipe, making sure there's not a single bubble left and the fluid is just running completely clear. If you need to as well, go and check down on the brake leading kit at the front of the car to make sure the pressure is still there. If it's not, then make sure you pump it up to around 10 PSI. Obviously, the longer you bleed the brakes for, the lower this pressure is going to drop to. So once I'm confident there's no more air bubbles coming through this pipe, I then take it off and then tighten up the brake nipple. It's quite surprising, the pressure doesn't actually drop that much as you're doing this. You'd think it'd drop a lot more, but it actually keeps a lot of pressure in the system. Once this is done, just repeat this process on the other brake at the back of the car, and then once everything is tightened up, go back down to the front of the car, there's a wee pressure release valve on the brake leading kit. Use this, and then remove the cap and the hose and replace it with the original cap on the reservoir, and make sure you plug the sensor back in as well. Then it's a quick test with the engine off to see if you've actually got a brake pedal and that it's staying in place and it's not sinking to the floor. And then also going around your brakes at the back of the car and checking you've got no leaks on the brake flexes or the brake bleeding nipple. Also I advise that you maybe take it a small test run, preferably in a drive even, back and forwards or at low speeds around the block. Don't go out onto the main road with the brakes until you're confident that they're definitely working perfectly. So with the brakes all done and looking brand new, the big question is, do they get it all done in time to take the car to work that night? So it's Ali last night, yes, I did take the wife's car to work. Uh, I took the Leon around the block to test it quickly and the brakes were really spongy. The pedal went pretty much to the floor actually. So there was obviously still air in the system. So once I woke up this afternoon after my night shift, I took the car back into the garage. I bled both the back brakes again and it's perfect now. The pedal's nice and firm. The handbrake's working and releasing perfectly as well. So pretty much like brand new brakes on the back of the car. Talking the brakes, I'm going to probably refurbish the old calipers there on the floor at some point. I've seen videos on YouTube about doing it, so what I'm going to do is take all the pistons out, the seals out, get them all cleaned up, resprayed red, lacquered, and on standby because no doubt those calipers will be knackered within two or three years. It's a common issue with Seats, Volkswagens, and Audis that these calipers just seize up really quickly. Anyway, one more job to do before I go back to night shift tonight is tidy up this garage as I've been, and I need to make sure that I keep constantly doing this out of habit, tidy the garage up so that any 
any future jobs, I can start again from fresh. I'm not working amongst the mess. Next job probably will be getting the Ibiza into the garage now and getting it back together, getting the engine running, getting the turbo on, getting it serviced and MOT'd and fingers crossed. It's roadworthy and I can then get it on the road and then get the Leon off because I've got some bigger plans for the Leon over the next few months. And if you want to catch those videos, obviously hit the subscribe button down below. You can catch a previous video up here in the corner and obviously hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you later. Cheers. Oh, 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 o